Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and today I'm going to be featuring Industrial Craft using Tier 1 Energy. I'm basically going to try and cover every facet of Tier 1 Energy production. So, let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to know about is Sticky Resin, which if you watched my Rubber Tree tutorial, you understand. Um, a basic way to get Sticky Resin is to cook it. So if we place some coal in there, you'll see that it'll convert one Sticky Resin into one piece of rubber. Great. This is not the most efficient way to get sticky resin, by the way. You'll see a more efficient way later on in this video. The next thing you need to know about is iron. In industrial craft, if you cook iron with some coal, you get an item called refined iron. This is used to build most of your industrial craft machines. Very nice. So, rather than sit and wait for that stuff to cook, I'm going to spawn myself some with TMI here and some rubber. The first thing you need to know about is how to create energy. To do that, you're going to want to build first a machine using refined iron machine block. Then you're going to want to build a furnace. Finally, you're going to want to build a battery. In order to build a battery, you're going to need to use three copper wires to create three copper blocks, I'm sorry, to create an uninsulated copper wire. Combine your uninsulated copper wire with rubber to get copper cabling. This is used also later on, but it's a component of the rechargeable battery. Four pieces of tin, which is also an item new to industrial craft along with copper, and some redstone in the middle, creates a rechargeable battery. Combine your rechargeable battery, machine block, and furnace to get a generator. While I'm at it, I'm going to build a couple more batteries. The generator is a simple electrical energy creating machine, and it basically creates energy using, you guessed it, coal. Place the coal on the bottom here, and the generator turns on, and it starts producing electricity at a rate of 5 EU per second. That's 5 energy units. That's a new measurement in industrial craft. You can also place a rechargeable battery in the top slot here and all the energy in the generator will drain out and get stored in the rechargeable battery. And any new energy that gets created will be stuck in the rechargeable battery. As you can see, my generator has fully charged my rechargeable battery, and any extra energy created is stored in a small buffer in the generator. The next item we're going to make is called the bat box place a copper cable, some wood, and some empty batteries to get the bat box. We're also going to need a wrench. A wrench is made with bronze. The way you make bronze is to combine tin and copper. When you place the bat box on the ground, you'll see that there is one side with a small yellow dot. All the other sides look the same. Also you'll notice the generator has stopped using coal as it's filled up its energy capacitor. If we take our copper cables and connect our generator to our bat box to a side that is not the yellow dot, we'll see it turns back on. The bat box interface shows us that there's energy storage here. The bat box also stores energy, and this stores 40,000, compared to the rechargeable battery, which stores 10,000. So the bat box basically stores four times the amount of energy as a single rechargeable battery. The next item to see is created using six copper cables piece of refined iron and two redstone. This gives us an electronic circuit. The electronic circuit does nothing on its own, but it's used in other recipes in industrial craft. 
by basing a piece of glowstone and four copper cables like so, you get the EU reader. This device, when you right click on a copper cable, it starts a measurement. When you right click again, it tells you how much power has traveled through that cable per tick on average during the duration. So if I right click again, you'll see it's five energy units per tick. As I mentioned earlier, the generator produces five energy units per tick. If I were to take another generator and place it on this line, here for example, and place some coal in there. Now both generators are feeding the cable and we're getting 10 energy units per tick. The bat box is rapidly filling up with energy. If we take an empty battery, place it inside the bat box in the top slot, it will quickly fill up, much quicker than charging it with a generator, and obviously use the energy that's stored in the bat box. We can also place the battery in the bottom slot of the bat box to fill the bat box up. It will drain the battery and fill up the bat box. The final item I'm going to show you uses an electronic circuit, a machine block, and four tree taps. This is the extractor. This is one of the many items you can use your electricity for. Every bat box and other energy storage units has an output face. This is what the circle is. Energy will be outputted that way. You can input energy into the bat box from any of the other five faces. However, energy will only be output on this circle. If you right click a non-energy, a non-output side with your wrench, it will rotate the block. Now the output face is here. You can run energy to any machine in the game simply by connecting from an energy storage device or directly from a generator. You know the extractor is powered because this line is red. Extractors have a couple purposes. One of the most important ones is that it creates sticky resin into rubber in a rate of one sticky resin per three rubber. This is much more efficient. Every machine in industrial craft uses a certain amount of energy. If I right click on this wire while this machine is running, we can see it's using roughly two energy units per tick. Wires in industrial craft will only draw energy from their source block in the amount that they need. This bat box is capable of producing 32 energy units per tick. This means I could connect 16 of these extractors to this wire and it would still function. However, if I put a 17th down, it would no longer function. It would be drawing more energy than it can and these machines would not run continuously. In order to take an item off the world, you're going to want to use your wrench. If you use a simple drill, it will destroy the item. Using a wrench, we'll pick it back up. An important thing to note about cables is that there is, in fact, an energy limit. For example, if I were to pick up this bat box and lay down one, two, three, four, five, six blocks of wiring, and then place down my bat box and took an energy reading on the wire, We can see only 8 units of energy are flowing through this wire, rather than the expected 10. The reason for this is that there is energy loss over a distance. With copper cabling that's measured like this, the energy block distance is 1 loss of energy for every 5 blocks. Because of this, you're going to want to keep your energy storage units, or some kind of machine block, close to your energy producing block.
now getting 10 energy units per tick once more. Finally, just like bat boxes, you can place a charged battery in the bottom slot of any machine, and it will use the energy in the battery to power the machine. You do not need to run cables to that machine. Once you take the battery out, it will use whatever charge it has stored in the machine and eventually run out of power. This wraps up Tier 1 energy production. There are more powerful generators, more powerful storage units, and more powerful portable storage units, which will be covered in Episode 2, which will feature Tier 2 energy storage.